Hi everyone, if you want to learn how to add animations to your slide day presentation, you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can animate your slides. The first type of animation that I want to show you is a click animation. So let's say that we want to animate this slide and we want this text to animate to appear only when the user click next. How can we do that? So the simplest way and the most basic way is to add a vClick tag before this text and after. We just have to keep in mind that if you don't leave a space before the text and this tag here, this is not going to work. So it's probably a bug that is still there in slide dev. So just keep that in mind because as you can see, I can save, I can go to the previous slide and this text is not animating yet. But if we put a space after the tag and after the text and we save it again, now we can see that if I go to the previous slide, then I click next and then I click next again and this text is going to appear. As you can see, this is not very handy because it's going to take a lot of space. So we can put this class, we click, inside the addiv tag. So let's do that. So we're going to add another one right here at the bottom. We're going to add a div, which has this class, we click, and then we are going to say hello and then we're closing the div. So let's save this. Here we can go in slide dev, click refresh the presentation. Now at the top here we can see that we have one click. So let me go to click two and now we can see hello. So now, now that I'm in the presentation, unfortunately you cannot see which key I'm pressing on the keyboard, but if I press back, hello disappears. And if I press right, then hello appears. This is much uh, nicer and neater just to write it in this way. So if you want to add some other text that is going to appear together with this click, with this second click, we can use the tag V after. So let me duplicate this line here and let me say V after. So I'm going to say hello after. So this is going to appear at the same time that this text above is appearing. So let me go back in the presentation and here again at the top you can check your clicks. So I've clicked zero inside this slide, then I've clicked one text to animate and then hello and hello after are appearing at the same time. If you have a lot of items, let's say a list that you want to add and you want that each element on the list appears one after each other, you can wrap all that list inside a vclicks tag. So let's add that here in the code. Let's add a space also before this vclicks. And again, keep in mind that you, have to, you have need to have a space before the text and after the text. So we have this vclicks. Let's see, let's click here on the slide and let's click let's refresh the page. Now we can see that we can go ahead with the clicks. So we have item one, item two, item three, and item four that are appearing one after each other. Let's for instance add a white line so we can just separate the hello after from this list and now we can go back and we can make this item disappear. So great, this was a simple way of adding like some animation on click. We can also specify here inside the div when we are specifying here vclick, we can also specify at which specific click this element is going to appear. So let me copy some boilerplate code here. So we're going to add another three divs, okay, in which we're going to add the number one, two, and three. So we want that this is the order of the list. So three is going to be at the bottom, then we have two, and then we have one. But we want that three appears at the first click, two appears at the second click, and one appears at the third click. Let's save this file. Let's go here at the top, and we specify click two, and then reload the page. We can see that at click two, the item three must have appeared and the item two must have appeared. But the item three, one, no. So I can go next and then we can see that this item one also has appeared. Here, we have not specified the number of clicks in this list here. So each item is going to be automatically calculated and slide dev is going to calculate automatically when this item is supposed to appear. So this one is going to appear at, so we have one click, two click, and this is going to be the third click. Let's verify that. And we can see that we are in fact at the third click, we can see item one. This is going to be fourth for item click for item two, item three is going to fifth, and then item seven is going to be seven click. So I can go to click seven and we should be able to see all the items here in this list. So this is quite handy because we can specify and target specifically an object and we can specify at which clicks is going to actually appear. So right now, we are showing that each item, when it's appearing, so after our next click, we can see that we are going to targeting and changing the opacity from zero to one, and this transition is going to last 400 milliseconds, and it's going to be ease. 
is transition. So if you want to find out more about the type of uh, transitions that you can have in CSS, uh, for instance, uh, you can have a look at W3 schools uh, here, and they show you the different type of transitions uh, that CSS uh, allows. So we have linear, so it's going to be a continuous transition. We're going to have is, is in, is out, or is in and is out. Please refer to this page for more information. But uh, we can specifically target uh, how this uh, animation is going to look like. How can we do that? We can add a style tag uh, as we did before. So if you want to understand uh, how to change a bit the layout or the look of your presentation, please also refer to my previous video in which I showed you how to add this style tag uh, and change the look of the presentation. And here we can target specifically some class. So this is a slide dev we click target is going to be the target class that is going to be assigned automatically by slide dev when an object is appearing on the screen. And we can change what the type of transition, the duration, which now is a thousand milliseconds. So we have changed that. We're going to specify the is and we are also specifying the delay. So let's go back to click zero of this presentation and let's see how this has changed our presentation. So right now we go to the previous slide. So we have click number one, I've clicked, but as you can see, it has taken a bit of time for the text to appear because we have added a delay and the transition now is longer. So let's click on this arrow here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to click now. As you can see, it takes some time for the text to appear. So with this CSS, you can really customize and target how your transition are going to be looking like. So for instance, right now, let me remove the delay and let's put only 10 milliseconds, but let me increase the duration of the transition. So if I save this and I refresh this page, I go to click zero, all the text disappear. But then if I click here on the arrow, you can see that now we have no delay practically, but the animation is taking a bit longer to appear in our text. So of course, right now we were able to add a bit of animations on click, but we were not able to control much in our slide because we were able only to control the transition time and the type of easing and the duration or the delay after the click. But let's add now full motion. So we can add this full motion to text and we can add this motion to images as well. So let me show you an example. So I'm going to add a new slide and I'm going to call it motion. So let's navigate to the slide. We can go to slide 12, which is here motion. And then let's add, let's add some motion to our text. So I'm going to add just an example. I'm going to add an example with some text and I'm going to add an example with a figure. But of course, uh, feel free to experiment a bit with this. And I'm also going to add a link to the view use motion library, which is the library that SlideDev uses to create motion and animate the presentation. So please read more on their official documentation if you want to find out more how you can customize and edit all the animations. And let me show you a simple example. So the first example that I want to show you, which is super simple and is taken from the slide dev documentation, is to add a bit of motion and just make sure that the text move from one coordinate, which is minus 80, so it's going to be a bit on the left, and then it's going to enter and it's going to transition, and we're going to see the text in the right position. So let me save this, and as you can see, we have added an animation. So we can go back to the previous slide. Why can't we see the animation? We have added the animation, we saw it at the beginning, but now we cannot longer see it. The reason why we cannot see the animation is because SlideDev preloads slide for us, so it's more responsive. But if you want to add animation, we don't want this behavior. So in the front matter, before the slide here, we need to add preload semicolon false. So let me save this and let's go back to the previous slide. And then I click. I need to refresh, of course, the website. So if I go back, as you can see now, every time that I go back and I navigate between one slide to the other, we can see the animation. Of course, now we are no longer limited to have uh, the text coming in from the left. We can also have the text coming in from the right and the bottom. Please consider that uh, the X is positive from left to right and the Y is positive from top to bottom. So let's change this from negative 80. We go to Y 80 also. And then we're going to specify that the final text, we want it in 00. So this is not 00 of the slide, but it's 00 of the where the text would appear normally if we would have added to the slide. So let me save this, let me refresh this page here, and now we can see the animation. So we can see that text is coming in from the bottom. Of course, we can add a lot of other things. For instance, here, and please refer to the official documentation. So if you look at their official documentation, they explain all these things, but we can also add a transition, and we can add a rotation, and we can add a duration, and we can add all these type of things, and opacity. 
So let me show you something very simple. And then again, of course, you're going to be able to change this based on your preference and your liking. So we're going to say that initial, the text is also transparent. We want to have an opacity of zero. And when the text are at the end of the animation, we want the text to be opacity one. So it's going to be even nicer because our animation is going to fade in. So let's refresh this slide here. And we can see that it started from dark and then it rises up because the opacity is one. And let's specify the transition. So in the transition, we can also specify a lot of parameters. And I'm going to just copy and paste it here because it's something like that uh, I've, uh, I've just, uh, I just tested before. But again, feel free to play a bit with it. So let me revert back. So I want to show you how the transition now is going to look like. So the text is coming here from the bottom. And let's play a bit with the transition. So I'm going to add in here transition. And then we have to add transition. And then we have to have curly braces. We're going to have a spring type of transition, so it's going to bounce a bit. So it's going to start here from the bottom, it's going to go at the top, and then it's going to bounce a bit. And we're going to be able to specify the behavior with damping, stiffness, and mass, so we can change that. We can specify the delay, and this is the delay after which the transition is going to appear. So let's say a second, and then we're going to specify the duration. And the duration, for instance, let's say that we want two seconds, so we can really see our transition. So let me refresh this page. Now you can see that this is the animation. So it starts after a second, it goes up and down, but in a much slower way. Now we can change some factor. So we can have change the factor of the dumping and we can change the mass. Let's save this again and let's see how it's going to look like. As you can see, I have decreased the dumping. So it's going to bounce more up and down and I've increased the mass. So it has a bigger mass. So it's going to um, oscillate for a longer period. So let's revert back and let's add a mass of 3 and a dumping, maybe not of 10, but let's say of uh, uh, maybe 5. And finally, we can see again how it's going to look like. Of course, you will have to play a bit with it because this is going to be based on your liking and on what you like to do. We are not limited with text to add motion, but we can also add images. So in the previous video, I show you that I had an image. So let's add this image here. So let me copy this div here. So I'm just going to copy the div here at the bottom. But instead of showing slide dev this time, I'm going to import the image. So how can I do that with an image tag? And then I can specify the source. And the source is in images. And then we have the image, which is XPS. And then we can see, let's see how first how the image is going to look like. And let's remove the delay. OK. Let's change back the damping so we don't want the picture oscillate too much. And let's increase a bit the mass again. So we are going to, it's going to be looking a little bit better. And let's specify the style of the image. And let's say that we want to have margin, so auto, from left to right. And we are going to have a width of, let's say, 80% of the screen. Great. So the image is a bit smaller. We have to reduce the size even a little bit more. OK, so now we can see the whole image. And let's see how the animation looks like. As you can see, we have the image, the image transitioning from the bottom right to the center. Of course, we can change all this behavior and we can, for instance, remove the Y. So we can just have a motion from X, so from the right to the left. And of course, if you want, you don't even need to add a motion, but you can also change the opacity only of the image. But then in that case, I would just use, I would suggest you to just use the, the previous tag that we use, the click. Okay? But this is just to show you that you have, uh, you can go, you can tweak the animation as you like and as you want. So as you can see here, I've added this uh, image with the animation. The last thing that I want to show you is some preset animations that you can get directly from um, the package that we are using here, view, use, motion. So in order to see the preset animation that they offer, we can click here on get started and we can look at the presets here. And for instance, we could have used this div motion fade. So let me go into another slide here, the final slide, and I can say animate an image. So we have added our final slide here. We are going to add this div here, motion fade. And of course, we need to keep in mind that we need to add this preload false. So let me add this here at the bottom in the front matter here. So we're going to add inside this div, we're going to copy the same code that we wrote here at the top for the image. So let me close the div tag first. So here we have the div tag with the motion fade, and then we have the image. So let's go back to our presentation. We can refresh, and as you can see, 
here we have the motion slide, and then we can have here animate an image. The only problem, as you can see, this animation is very, very quick, okay? And I don't like it. I want an animation that lasts for a little bit longer. So how can I do that? Well, I can add a class here. I can call it uh, my fade. And then, of course, uh, we can target the duration of that uh, using a style tag. So let me open and close the style tag. And inside here, we're going to target that class. So we call it uh, my fade. So we're going to say dot my dash fade and then we open the curly braces and then we close the curly braces and inside here we're going to specify the transition duration so in this case i want to specify the transition duration is uh, 3000 milliseconds or three seconds so let me refresh this slide here and as you can see now this slide here looks completely different so the animation is lasting for much longer than it was lasting before that was all for this video unfortunately slide dev has not uh, yet enabled the page transitions so i'm going to make a video about that as soon as they're going to release that uh, feature i really hope you find this video interesting if you want to learn more about slide dev please go and check my other video on slide dev and you might really find interesting the video on markdown syntax if you like this video, also consider, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. If you want to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.